Okay, so let's wrap up human evolution. In the last several parts, we were talking about what makes hominids different than the ape line, what makes each group of hominid ancestors unique and special, kind of their key features. And we left off talking about Homo sapiens and looking at what makes Homo sapiens different, unique. Individual, you know, a different species, what were the special features that really enabled us to dominate the earth for the last so many hundreds of years. So our species has been around about 100,000 um, and we've spread to all continents. Now when we look at geographical evidence, the anthropological evidence, the molecular evidence, all the lines of evidence, what we're seeing is this pattern of radiation from Africa. So earliest human ancestors are found in Africa. We see sites there. Some of them date back about 130,000 years. Still a little bit of question. Are they really that old or are they closer to 100? But then we start seeing sites in Asia that show up around 100,000. We see sites in Europe that show around 60,000. And we see this radiation pattern of Homo sapiens or Cro-Magnon man. We started here, we migrated out, went into Europe, some of our ancestors went over to Asia, went all the way down through Australia into these regions, and then we saw them go through Asia, go north, cross the Bering Land Bridge, eventually make their way to North America, down the western coast of North America, and ultimately down to South America. So the youngest, some of the youngest sites of Cro-Magnon or our ancestors are down here in South America. So you think about it, it took thousands of years for our populations to be able to spread and migrate and move and keep colonizing all of these different regions. So it took quite a while to get there. So all the dates and the sites follow this pattern showing modern humans, we started in Africa, and then we all, and various groups of our population migrated out, but we're all from African origin. Now, now what makes one population or group of humans different than another? What makes Africans different than Europeans, than Central Americans, than Australians, is not our origin. It's the variations that have developed in us over the last 50, 60, 70, whatever, thousand years. So if you're in a northern environment, you don't need as much pigmentation. Why? It's not as necessary. So the populations that started to settle and live in Europe in the northern latitudes, skin color lightened up. You don't need to produce as much melanin. It's not needed because the sunlight isn't as strong in the northern environments. But if your population stays in Africa and you're constantly exposed to an equatorial region, a lot of sunlight year round, you better have a dark complexion. That's going to help protect you. So consider this. Africans have dark complexion because they are darker, very dark complexions because their group has been in Africa since hominids evolved into Homo sapiens. Europeans, lighter complexion because of this environment, less time up here. But then if you circle around and come back to the equatorial regions over here and look at folks in Central America, South America, they have darker complexions than Europeans, but not nearly as dark as the African complexion because they took thousands of years to get here. And as the populations were migrating, we would see a lightening in the skin color. And then as the population circled back down, thousands of generations later, we would see that skin color starting to darken again, but not nearly, not getting nearly as dark as what was always in Africa. So all the evidence shows this kind of migration pattern for Cro-Magnon or Homo sapiens. So going into Europe, there are Cro-Magnon sites scattered all over Europe. So this helps continue to add more data, more information, and more 
a knowledge to the uh, human evolutionary tree. So we thought, all right, that's it. That's that's all the hominids out there. Human beings, Homo sapiens, Cro-Magnon, whatever term you want to use, we're the only ones alive. The last relative of ours, the Neanderthals, disappeared about 30, 35,000 years ago. Interestingly enough, Cro-Magnon was actually interbreeding with Neanderthals, and the two species blended together. Individuals with European ancestry have, it's estimated, have a 2-3% of their genome is, Europe, is Neanderthal. But individuals who are African don't have the Neanderthal genome in them. So if you're from, if you're an African origin or your ancestors are directly from Africa, you have no Neanderthal in you. Everybody from Europe with a European ancestral history, a more recent ancestral history, we have Neanderthal in us. So a <clears throat> very interesting genetic discovery. Now, all right, but here was a recent, fairly recent addition to the hominid evolutionary tree. Shocked the heck out of everybody. Holy cow. Homo florensians. This species was around until about 13,000 years ago. So they show up about 840,000 years ago, and they're around until about 13,000 years ago. Now, that's huge, you know, a lot of time compared to where we're at today, but they were here longer than Neanderthals. Now, the only place we see Florensians is in the South Pacific, the Isle of Flores. So it's a little island here, Indonesia, the Lingbao Basin right there. That's where they find Homo Florensians. So the thought is, as Homo ergaster migrated and moved out of Africa, and they migrated down here through Asia, and they migrated into the islands of Indonesia and the Philippines and all these islands, the thought is Homo ergaster gave rise to Erectus, then Erectus evolves into Florensians on these islands. So what we're still a little unclear is how did that evolution occur? How long did it take, etc. But the thought again here is when we look at Homo Florensians, they came from Homo erectus. So crazy new species. All right, so what do we know about them? Well, they found 13 complete skeletons. These weren't fossilized, so they've actually extracted DNA from them. They were preserved in the mud of the cave system, and they had not decomposed completely. So they said it was the consistency of, like, mashed potatoes, but 13 skeletons. So these are not genetic anomalies of humans. They're not diseased humans. They're separate species. They're all about half the size of a modern human. And when we look at their culture, their history, their group life, social hunting, etc., they had all the things that Homo sapiens had. They were advanced, they were complex, they worked as teams, they were actually out hunting these giant, well for them it would be giant elephants because these guys were only three feet tall. So they were hunting these stegodons, they're actually miniature elephants, they're ancestors and cousins to Asian elephants we see in Asia today. But these guys, this culture thrived on these islands for hundreds of thousands of years and then eventually they went extinct. Now what type of interaction would have occurred between Florensians and modern Homo sapiens? We can only guess. What was fascinating though, the anthropologists who worked on this study, some of the early anthropologists on this study, talk to the locals, they talk to the villagers, the people who live in the rainforest of Indonesia, those tribes there, and the tribes would tell stories about my grandfather's grandfather used to trade weapons or jewelry or fish with the little people who lived in the forest. So they referenced these little people who lived in the forest, and anthropologists are wondering if that's a reference to this Homo forensian species. So it could be very possible 
that species existed until maybe hundreds of years ago. We don't have any solid evidence on that. The solid evidence says the last known Florentians were around living around 13,000 years ago. Possibly they've existed closer to modern day, but we don't have evidence at this point. Who knows what the near future will bring. So to wrap all this up, what we want to look at is all modern humans, everybody in this picture, I don't care what country you're from, what nationality, what ethnicity, what race, whatever you want to call yourself, we all trace our ancestry back to Africa. It's just how many generations and how many miles does it take to get back to Africa for each of us. Our phenotypic differences. Why do we have dark hair, light hair, dark eyes, light eyes, black skin, brown skin, green skin, yellow skin, purple skin, whatever it is. Why do we have these variations? The differences are due to mutations. Oh. So mutations of our DNA and the environmental influence. That's it. That's why some people have blue eyes and some people have brown eyes and some people have green eyes. Blue eyes are a mutation. Showed up in European populations about seven, 8,000 years ago. We don't see blue eyes in Africans. That mutation never occurred in a direct African population. Now, if you blend an African and a European individual, sure, you can have blue eyes. But when we look at these things, our differences are simply because of mutations in our DNA and the environmental influence. What is successful, what persists, what is not successful, does not persist. Okay, so for those of you interested in this, if you really want to know your true genetic history, I would highly encourage you to look at this website, National Geographic. It's called the Genographic Project. What they're doing is they're looking at genetics and trying to trace genetic history of as many people on Earth as possible. Um, the project started back in 2005, so they're over a decade into this. They're actually now into Geno 2.0, the next generation. And what they're doing is looking at what is our genetic ancestral history. So they have over 822,000 participants from all over the world. Simple. I mean, you have to buy the kit. I don't know how that much kits are. I'm not going to you know, push that. But if people were interested, what they're doing, you buy the kit, do a cheek swab, send it in. They pull your DNA. They analyze your DNA. And then what they're going to do is come back with a map. So the map that they're going to send you, you'll, you'll get an email and log in to the, the website, log in with your ID number, and then the map shows here's where your gene started. Here's where your particular DNA started, and then at this point in history, here's where we see your genetics at this point in history. And it keeps moving forward in time, getting closer and closer to modern day era, showing how our genes, our genetic history, or our genetic code moved throughout the world. So it's a way to trace ancestral history. So they start at the beginning of your genetic history, and then it moves forward towards current day. So I can't show you because I don't have a way to pull it up, but I had this done, and mine started here. I would guarantee everybody's will start here. And then it shows my genetic history moves through the Middle East, goes up into Asia, through Asia, curls back, and so many thousands of years ago, it goes into Europe. And then I know from family history, so many hundreds of years ago, my ancestors came over to North America from Europe and settled in this country. But I can trace my genetics all the way back to an African origin. So the goal here is to keep in mind we're all the same species.